So it's finally here. After being teased at the Super Bowl this year, this is Rain's latest controller, the Rain Performer. Now this isn't Rain's first four channel controller, nor is it Rain's first controller with motorized jog wheels, but these jog wheels are a little bit different than what you found on the Rain 1, but we'll get back to that a little bit later. Now this isn't an in-depth review video that might be coming soon after I give this some more road time, but I wanted to go over some features that I think set the Rain Performer apart from any other Serato DJ controller on the market. And let's start with those jog wheels. So we've seen motorized jog wheels on DJ controllers in the past. You have things like the Rain 1, which had a more traditional kind of turntable-like jog wheel. We had jog wheels like the Pioneer Rev 7 that had more or less this kind of aesthetic with an acrylic top with a screen in the middle. Now what makes this different, in my opinion, on the Rain Performer, first and foremost, has to be the size of the display on the jog wheel. And not only that, but the information displayed on the jog wheel is really legit and really useful as well. So for instance, if we look at the jog wheel, here in the middle we have our main moving waveform. On the right hand side we have the overview waveform for the deck. And then what's nice is on the left side we actually have the waveform of the opposite deck, which can be really handy and just at a glance you can see if things are going in and out of time. And it's just a really great implementation and I love that they increase the size of that display compared to other previous jog wheels in the past. Now outside of those waveforms, we have the beat jump value which we can change right here on the controller, which is really nice. We have the BPM of the deck as well as the pitch range which can be set just like you would in Serato as well as the pitch percentage right here. At, on the bottom, we have the loop length, the time remaining on the track as well as the key of the track. So it's really nice to see all of this information on this display all at once. And of course, if I touch the track selector right here, I get my library view right here. So I get all the information I really need all in one place in the jog wheel. Now, besides that, notice that this is a lot different than the Rain 1 jog wheel because that had more of the spindle on it like you would see on the, the Denon uh, SC 5000 M's. This one, however, is just a flat acrylic top. But what's really nice about this is this is magnetic, so I can take this off. And the performer comes with these little rings. They're kind of like slip mats, and they give you three different ones. You have this white one right here, as well as if I can get this off, this acrylic kind of clear one. And then in the pack, you also get a black one as well and they all give different feels of um, kind of tension and what's nice is that you don't only have to use one as you can see I'm using that clear one as well as the white one just to get the right feel for how I like my jog wheel to slip so let's just put this back just like that then all you have to do is line up these guys right here with the platter and it just magnetically sl slaps in place. And, you know, I, don't, I never felt it coming off. I, I never once even had to think about it. It just feels really solid. Um, it's kind of similar to the Rev 7, but I will say that I kind of like the feel of these better. Uh, more so because the torque on these jog wheels is really high, which I like. So if you've used something like the PLX 1000s by Pioneer or even the Rain 12s with the high torque setting, this gives you that kind of feel. And... It's just the kind of response that I'm used to at this point, uh, being a huge Rain 12 user. What I do like as well is the way that they use the traditional turntable kind of, uh, you know, jog wheel, or I'm sorry, <laughs> platter, excuse me. And what's really nice, and one thing that I didn't like about the Rev 7 was the fact that it never really felt right to kind of just tap the side of the jog wheel, say I'm, I'm like, you know, slowing down, trying to beat match by ear. It kind of gave a wobbly effect, but with this Rain Performer, I really don't notice that. So for instance, so I can slip these back and forth, and I don't get that wobbling effect like I got on the Rev 7, even on the Rain 12s, I got that effect a little bit. And 
especially on something like the Rev7, I would use the pitch bend buttons a lot more than my traditional way of using turntables by, you know, kind of hitting the side of the platter to slow tracks down to get them in place. So I really like that feature. I could see myself actually using the platter like a traditional turntable way more on this in comparison to something like the Rain 12s or even the Pioneer Rev7. Now, outside of this amazing new jog wheel technology that I'm really in love with is the fact that you have so much control over Serato stems with this controller. Now, with the Rain 4, you did have that split stem, that stem split, I'm sorry. So, if I engaged it, let's jump to where the vocals are. I hit stem split. Now I have the vocals on one side and the instrumental on the other. Really handy, really cool. And you could also split them up. So for instance, hit that. So I could actually scratch just the vocals with the beat going and then kind of get them back in sync using the buttons. Now that's something that we saw on the Rain 4, the previous kind of controller like this. We also have the, you know, dedicated acapella and instrumental buttons. So if I hit that, which is really nice, as well as the normal stems pad mode. Right. So outside of those ways to mess with stems that we saw on the previous Rain 4 controller, there's a new one that they added, and we saw this on the Pioneer FLX10, where if I go ahead, start the track, hit shift, hit the Q button for the channel. Now I have control over the stems using the EQs. So now I can even increase the, the level of each one, not just on and off. which can be really handy, especially if you're getting really deep into stems and you want something to kind of poke out of the mix more than others. I love that feature on the FLX10 and I'm really happy to see it here on the Rain Performer. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the effects implementation on the Rain Performer. Previously, I've had the Rain 72, now the Rain 70 A-Track Edition, and now this one, and I will say this is probably the best implementation of hardware effects I've seen on a Rain product in recent times. Now we have these six buttons right here where we can go ahead and select our effects, but it's not just six effects. There's actually dozens of effects. If I just go ahead and hold one down and move this parameter knob, I can actually select different effects that are in here. And you even get those fader effects that we saw on the A-Track edition, where you can turn this into a synth or a filter, etc. Really cool to see that they added all of those features and combined it all into this one controller. Makes it a real kind of effects powerhouse on top of the fact that you get channel effects, much like you see on the Pioneer Club style mixers. So of course you have your filter, noise, a flanger, and one really cool one that I haven't seen before is the filter roll. Really cool kind of effect. You can get pretty creative with it. Combining that with like an echo out or something, I could see some really creative possibilities. But having these hardware effects on top of the suite of Serato effects, uh, software effects, makes this such a powerhouse when it comes to the effects department. And of course, with all Rain products, this has a really solid build. I always appreciate it and love the build of Rain products. This is pretty much metal all around. I know a lot of Pioneer products have a lot of plastic. While they do you know, last very long and they're, they have proven to be durable, but there's something about having an all metal construction that's really reassuring to have, especially if you plan on taking this on the road a bunch. I could see this lasting quite a long time. I've never had issues with my 72 nor with my uh, 70 A-Track edition. And this is gonna be a nice addition to the collection. And I'm sure it's gonna last just like those other mixes have last in the past. So that's a quick overview of the features of the Rain Performer that I really love, that I really haven't seen on other controllers. And I'll be doing a more in-depth review of this unit as I spend some more time with it. 
and probably some performance videos because the possibilities, especially with stem split and stem EQ, is just something that I really want to wrap my head around and get some really cool content out there. So be on the lookout for that. This just got announced, even though it's been teased previously earlier this year, and I'm really happy uh, with this product so far. I can see Rain selling a bunch of these. This is the best implementation of a motorized jog wheel on a controller that I've seen thus far, and it's not even close in my opinion. And I'm sure once people get their hands on it and see the responsiveness and how these jog wheels work, they're gonna love it just as much as I do. And that's about it. So be on the lookout for more Rain Performer content coming out. And of course, if you're looking for more DJ related content, be sure to click on one of the videos right here. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe to see all the other content coming out. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.